So what do you want to be when you grow up? Every child is asked this. Everyone here has probably been asked this many times throughout their lives. But when we were asked, how seriously do we really think about that question? And if we did think seriously about the question, how did we find an answer that would ultimately lead us to a fulfilling life? Now, I'm firmly convinced that creative problem solving is the essential skill for finding that path to a fulfilling life. Now, creativity is thought to belong just to the arts, but if you look historically, the greatest innovations have come through forging new connections through previous disparate fields of knowledge through creative problem solving. So being creative with any problems that we confront in our own lives professionally or personally is really that key to uh, finding a new path. Now, I'm an artist and a professor here at UNT, and I continue to return to that question of what do I want to be when I grow up? And I reflect on the personal process and path that I've gone through, as well as the path that my students have gone through to bring them into my classroom. Now, I want to share this two-sided drawing that I made, that I still have, that I made when I was seven years old. And uh, my personal archivist, my mom labeled it, what I will be 20 years from now. And that was back in 1979. Now, you can see from the beginning that I was conflicted in trying to answer this question. So I, I remember starting this drawing, and you can see the artist with doing a portrait outside with the bright sunny day and everything. But then something else creeps in. There's a little black boot in the bottom there, if you can see. And I remember flipping the page over and saying, well, I have a second answer. And maybe it was influenced by my dad, who's a mechanical engineer, and this idea of what a scientist might be, so a lab coat in a lab with colorful liquids and beakers and test tubes and things like that. So let's skip ahead a little bit to high school when there's increasing pressure to really make some, some real decisions. What are you going to go to college for that might ultimately lead towards, towards a career? Now, I was naturally gifted in math and science, maybe from my dad, who knows? And, but something different was happening for me in my art classes. It didn't feel like homework. I, I wanted to be better. I wasn't as naturally gifted as I was in my math or science classes, but I just, there was something about it that seemed like I could uh, just continue to improve in it. And it didn't feel like just all the rest of the homework from the other classes. So I started to think seriously about going to college for art and, and ultimately becoming an artist. And I, I shared these ideas with my parents. They were not pleased. Um, so we, we had some discussions, as teenagers and parents will do, and we came to a compromise where, fortunately, I lived close to Carnegie Mellon University in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and I went to a summer pre-college uh, course with other art students, and we would see what this would be. And I think my parents were, were secretly hoping that I would be discouraged, that I would see I was out of my league, surrounded by amazing young artists. But what happened is I had one of those stereotypical epiphanies. I still remember uh, the first time that we're drawing and we have our drawing pads out and the live model is there and we're doing these quick gesture drawings and, and it just, everything came into clarity and it was like, this is where I need to be. Now, my path has evolved and changed. I don't do uh, live gesture drawings for models anymore, but I've stayed in the arts. And I thought that I left all that math, science, and engineering behind me. But this, this wasn't entirely true, as you'll soon see. So let's fast forward again. 20 years, I complete my undergraduate and graduate degrees in the art, and was fortunate to land a full-time teaching position at Penn State University, another research one institution. Now, if you're not familiar with how the arts function within a research institution, let me make some parallels for you. So my, my studio, think of it like a lab, and then the, the publishing of articles and things like that, think of those as the exhibitions of the artworks that I create in my lab. But an interesting thing happened. When I was left to my own devices to work however I wanted to in my studio, I seemed to have a lot more in common with my dad than I ever thought I did. So I was curious about materials and processes. I did countless experiments and changing variables. And it, it wasn't the way that my other colleagues in the arts worked. Now, I had a major turning point in my career where I happened to be sharing my studio with a colleague who was a printmaker and artist bookmaker. And he invited this, this young new colleague to collaborate on these awards for an environmental design symposium. And so 
he had a lot of books around that he would use as art material to give to his students and everything else. And so we wanted to make something functional for that uh, environmental design symposium. So we started cutting the books apart, bolting them together, and made these uh, functional candlesticks that the award winners can have. We loved that process so much and had so much fun uh, that we made a couple lamps for ourselves that I still have one and that I brought uh, to share with you today. And something that really stuck with me was that the grain, as you cut through the book, started looking like wood grain again. It was, it was from the printed letters on the pages. And even though my current focus at that time was on metalworking and, and woodworking, paper as an art material just fascinated me. And then that internal sort of like scientist engineer part of me kicked in and I started wondering, well, if this didn't have to be all bolted together, I could just glue it and then it expands all the types of things that I could make. And I just kept experimenting and it was so much fun. It didn't feel like I was working. I was just a child again, playing in my studio. And then I was fortunate to accept a position here at University of North Texas, and I had colleagues and engineers that connected me to an environmentally sound plant-based plant resin uh, that I could bond all the, this recycled paper together. And then UNT again supported me to help me trademark a name, which started out as a joke, thanks to my wife, uh, called Thermonite. And now other artists can use Thermonite to make their own artworks out of it. And so I fulfilled that dream of sharing my experiments in the studio with others, and I was able to curate an exhibition with more than 40 artists called Paper Alchemy, and it's been traveling internationally since June of 2021. And I've really found through my life, both personally and professionally, that creative problem solving has led to such deep and rich and enriching fulfillment. So even though I'm just well-established and looks like a grown-up, maybe not entirely, but I'm still asking myself, what do I want to be when I grow up? And my answer keeps evolving, as I hope it does for everybody here. Thanks.